this is a GMRS radio, and this is a ham radio, and it has come to my attention that many people do not fully understand the differences between a GMRS radio and a ham radio. They think they know the difference, but they do not know what they don't know. So in this very short and simple video, I will deconfoculate and catechize you on the differences, the technical differences, between a GMRS radio and a ham radio. Laid out before me and in their prone positions, I have three types of radios. This is the Motorola XTS 5000, and it can transmit on GMRS frequencies. However, it is not a GMRS radio. This is the world-famous Boofwang UV5R ham radio, and it is unlocked so that it can also transmit on GMRS frequencies. However, it is not a GMRS radio. This is the Model H8 that TID Radio recently sent me, and this is a GMRS radio. And what confoculates many people is how all three of these walkie-talkie radios are able to transmit on GMRS frequencies, yet only one is actually a GMRS radio. So how do you know what kind of radio you have? How do you know what the differences are? When you purchase a radio on the box, a ham radio will describe the radio as something like UHF or VHF, dual band, tri band, two meter, or some other confusing and meaningless term. And on the box of a business or LMR type radio, such as this XTS 5000, it will say LMR or business type radio, or maybe VHF or UHF or some other confoculating term. However, a GMRS radio and only a GMRS radio will say GMRS on the box. So what makes this radio worthy of the coveted GMRS sticker on the box? Irregardless of what some people may try to tell you in these United States of America, in order for our FCCs to allow a radio manufacturer to sell a radio with a GMRS sticker on the box, that radio must meet several qualifications and specifications. And it is only after rigorous and very expensive testing and certification by our FCCs that our FCCs will assign an FCC's ID number for the radio. And the manufacturer must then affix that ID number to every radio that they sell. As you can see right here. Then and only then will the FCC's decree that the manufacturer may sell the radio in these United States of America with a GMRS sticker on the box. And some of those rigorous specifications to get a GMRS sticker are, and just to be clear, what I'm about to enumerate are not all of the specifications. These are just a few of the things a GMRS radio must do in order to achieve the GMRS sticker. On the box. In order for the FCCs to certify a radio as GMRS, the radio must only be able to transmit on GMRS channels. All of the GMRS channels must be numbered as channels 1 through 22 using the correct and specified frequencies for each channel, and those channels must be baked into the radio so that they cannot be changed. All of the power and bandwidth rules and limitations as set forth by our dear leaders at the FCCs must also be baked into those 22 channels. This is because on GMRS, according to our FCCs, some channels must have limited power output and some of the channels must transmit only in narrow band and all of that must be baked into the radio. On a GMRS radio, you must not be able to enter a frequency directly onto the keypad and transmit, not even if that is a GMRS frequency. So you can enter a frequency to listen to on the keypad, but you must not be able to type in a frequency and then transmit. You may only transmit on a channel. If it is a mobile GMRS radio designed to be mounted in a vehicle that moves, it must not be able to transmit on GMRS channels 8 through 14. And if the GMRS radio is repeater capable, the repeater channels must be preset using specified frequencies and with a 
five my gigahertz split. And that also must be baked into the radio so as to not be able to be changed. Now, many of you probably have no idea what a five my gigahertz split is. And my friend, that is the whole idea. You do not need to know what a five my gigahertz split is to use a GMRS radio because it is all baked into the radio so that you never have to think about it. There are also some technical specifications and limitations regarding the RF electricities that squirt out of the radio that the radio must meet. However, I am not going to mention any of those because only radio dorks care about that kind of stuff. Most normal people with actual friends in real life do not care about any of that. So think of GMRS like a CB radio. In fact, it is the case that many people refer to GMRS as CB Radio 2.0. A CB radio has preset channels and preset power limits, just like on a GMRS radio. And to use a CB radio, you simply select the channel, push the button, and talk. A GMRS radio is the same way. However, a GMRS radio also allows you to do a lot more than you can do on a CB radio. And unlike CB radio, GMRS is not dead. In contrast to a GMRS radio, if you have a ham radio or a business type radio, such as this Motorola XTS 5000 or this Boofwang UV5R ham radio, there are generally no presets and no limits governing what you are allowed to do on the radio. You can type in any frequency, any power setting, and any bandwidth that the radio is capable of and then just start transmitting. So that means that you can enter a GMRS frequency into these radios, and you could use these radios to transmit on GMRS frequencies and talk with GMRS radios, but that does not make either of these two radios a GMRS radio. However, it is very important for me to point out and for you to understand that doing this would make our FCCs very, very sad. Now, no doubt some people may have noticed and are probably already furiously banging away at their keyboards to leave a comment to let everyone know that they have a GMRS radio, yet it does not follow all of the FCC's rules that I just enumerated. And it is indeed a fact that I have recently uploaded videos of GMRS radios that say GMRS on the box with an FCC's certification number, and yet those radios do not follow all of those rules that I just spent all of that time talking about. Does this mean that they are not real GMRS radios or that you should not use the radio any longer because it does not adhere to one of the FCC's specifications to become a GMRS radio? My friend, come close and listen very, very carefully. Are you listening? It is my opinion that when I buy a radio that the FCC's has certified as a GMRS radio with the full faith and credit of the United States government standing behind it, as demonstrated by the FCC's ID sticker on the radio, and it then turns out that the FCC's, and by extension, the government of these United States, screwed up and did not do their job, well, my friend, that is not my problem. And I will continue to use my FCC's certified radio as often as I choose because the FCC's said that I could when the manufacturer paid all of that money to the FCC's to certify the radio. And if the FCC's does not like that, then they can try to come and take it away from me.